Okay. Uh, two o'clock. Starting right on the nose, and I'm pretty sure everything is working properly. So I want to start here. Here's what we're going to do before I even... Uh, we're going to do a basic finger exercise. It's going to use uh, just three fingers and three strings. I'm just going to play a little bit, give you an idea where we're going. This is for a complete beginner, but what I'm about to play is going to sound harder than a beginner lesson, but you'll see in just a moment. You can totally do it, okay? I'm just going to... I'm actually just kind of making up stuff but with the same pattern, which we're gonna talk about in just one moment. Okay, let's jump in. Hi, my name is Teague. Welcome to just my second live stream. Although I've done a couple test streams and I've had some people show up, they've been really, really cool. And I want to thank anybody who might be watching or who will watch this that showed up and helped me through some of those technical technical difficulties. Really cool. But anyway, let's jump in. Uh, towards the end, we'll we'll talk about some other stuff. But I want to jump into the lesson because I want these live streams to very much be about this this content to help you with things. So, guitar in hand. Feel free to say hi at any point, and I will answer your questions as we go. Some of them I may save to the end, but we'll see how that goes. Okay, our thumb uh, is going to look after the sixth string. And if we're talking about fingerpick guitar, it's it's written as a little P um, on the music. And I will talk again more about that later. Okay, it's going to play our sixth string. This is our low E string. Our index finger, or pointer finger, which is written as an I, which makes sense. Uh, is going to play our second string. We could play any strings here, but I want to go six, two, and one for a minute. I'll show you why. And then our middle finger is going to play the high E string, our first string. So we have a low E with our thumb. B, our second string. You can see that. Just take my word if you can't. It's the second string. It's a B. And our middle finger will play an E. You can actually just rest your those three fingers on those strings kind of grab them get a feel for how that's going to feel you can even just play your thumb while the other two rest on strings one and two that's a good exercise just getting you used to um the fingers staying on those strings then we'll go to that index finger thumb index and then middle so we're going string six two one thumb Index, middle, six, two, one. Hey, pal, Herman, I don't even want to attempt your last name. Hi, how are you? Thanks for joining me in here. Uh, we want to relax this hand. When we're first starting to finger pick, it will tend to cramp up. So shake it out a little bit. Thumb. You know, just play that thumb by itself, kind of relax the, the hand. Again, rest index and middle on, on one and two, though. Index on two, middle on one. You know, take your hand away, shake it out, come back, do it again. You can play the index while you rest the other two fingers. Play the middle. And I'm resting the other fingers that way. Hey, Amani, Amani, excited to learn. Yeah, awesome. Um, hopefully your guitar is in hand. We've we're jumped right in, but you haven't missed much yet. We're basically just doing a very basic finger picking exercise, which is all this lesson will be about today. Uh, but we're gonna I'm gonna show you some fun ways to expand on practicing something very simple. Um, uh, that's why it's hard to say. Yeah, I, okay, I, I get that. I'm not even sure how you say where you're from, Farrell Islands. Islands. <laughs> anyway. We'll hopefully I'll get better at being able to pronounce people's names as these go on. This is just number two. Okay, so thumb on six, index on two, middle on one. The trick is to play them is play it slow and get comfortable. Again, shake the hand out, let it get comfortable, you know, let it relax, even though it's it's not gonna totally relax in the beginning. It's gonna feel tension. But but you're working to try to avoid too much tension. So play it. Be aware of that tension if it's building. 
shake it out, come back. Uh, and even as you start to speed it up, you may find that tension comes back. So again, shake the hand out. And as you speed it up, try to kind of think about, oh yeah, okay. When I was playing it at a slower tempo, it was easier. Uh, I forgot to bring my metronome here. Uh, and my phone is not handy for a metronome on my phone. But a metronome, tick, 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 you can download one free on... They're all over the place now, right? I just want to talk about a few ways we might want to practice this with a metronome. So I'm just going to pretend this is my metronome here. This will be my quarter note. Oh, hi, Erica. Um, do you have tips for speeding up both your left and right hands while playing? I do. Yep. And I'm actually I'm just kind of getting into that right, right and now. So perfect. It is just practice, but there are some tips for sure. So if we have a metronome, which again, I don't have one. I meant to have one here. So I'm making up one with my finger. This we're going to call the quarter note. So if the quarter note is set at 60 BPM or beats per minute, it would be the same as the sec second hand on your clock, which probably I'm going a little bit fast for that. Uh, so if this is my quarter note, if I play quarter notes, I'm going to play each finger with that beat. If I play eighth notes, I'm going to double that. If I play eighth note triplets, I'm putting three with every beat, which gives me a... You'll notice on that one, my thumb always hit with the beat. If I play 16th notes... Sorry, those were a little bit sloppy. I'll, I'll make sure I have a metronome. I'm also going to put a page up that goes with this. I started it. I thought it was going to be up in time. It is not. But if you come back to this page very recently, there'll be a link to it. Uh, or there will also be a link to subscribe to my mailing list. We'll give you information to it, too, plus free membership at the moment. Um, OK. Uh, so using a metronome is an important way to practice. It doesn't really matter whether you do quarter notes or, or eighth notes or eighth note triplets or 16th notes right now, whichever one that you want. But using a metronome is important because it will let you plot your progress. So if I set the metronome, say, Let's pretend this is 60. I don't know if it is, but somewhere maybe a little bit around there. And let's say I'm doing my eighth note. Then tomorrow, maybe I try to go to 65. Uh, the trick with practicing that is if you get it at 65 and you're comfortable, then say you did it. Write it down. Keep record. I usually like to use a calendar when I'm really working on practicing. So right on the calendar today, I can do it at 60 if I'm comfortable. Tomorrow, I'll try to 65. If I get it and I feel comfortable, I write 65. If I don't, I still write 60. And the learning curve for that will go, you might find it goes 60, 65, 65, 70, 75. And you might even want to move up by twos. It's, it's up to you. I'm just picking kind of a number. Uh, then you might find it go 80. Then it might be stuck. 80, 80, 80, 80, 80. Then, it, then you might have a little jump. 85, 90, 95, 100. That's usually how it goes. You'll get stuck again for a little bit. Then there'll be a little jump. And every once in a while, you'll go backwards. Some days, your fingers, the muscles in your fingers are just sore. So you have to keep that in mind, too. Uh, but a metronome, Eric, to answer your question, very important. It's a great way to plot your progress and work on, you're working on your rhythm. Um, and and your, uh, the other thing you have to remember, everyone, is that you're working on those little muscles in your fingers to get them used to doing these motions uh, and getting stronger. OK, so let's go a little bit further um, and talk about how other ways we can play the same exercise but make it kind of fun. So we have our, for anybody just joining, six, two, one, thumb playing six, index playing two, middles playing one. So it gets really boring really quick to just keep playing that over and over again. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to play some notes on this low E string to make it very interesting, which is what I did at the beginning of this. So the most logical place would maybe be to be called what's a, a major scale. If you don't know what a major scale is, you may know the sound of do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. You may know that do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. You may have heard that before, but that's the sound of a major scale. And most of a lot of the music that we listen, especially if we talk about pop radio, not just pop, I use pop, I'm saying popular. So we're talking about country or 
or, or rock or dance or um, are a lot of that music is built around a major scale or a key we call it they go hand in hand so we would say an E major scale is going to be built of four sharps don't bear with me that don't don't get scared yet um, and the key of E major has four sharps in it again no need to be scared um, well, but we'll talk about what those are. Right now, we don't really care about the names of these, these notes that I'm about to tell you, and we're not really concerned with the key of E major having four sharps, whatever those are. Uh, we're just concerned with this finger-picking exercise, but having some fun with it, okay? Uh, and then, again, if you want to subscribe to the mailing list for, for more information, or I'll put some links, and I'll show you some ways that I like to learn the guitar starting. Um, and I do like to learn a, a major scale in the beginning, but not E because that has four sharps. The key of C has moves. That's a better place to learn the, the fretboard and start getting a basis. But because we're using this E string as our drone, we don't have a C string, um, we are going to play uh, in the key of E. So here's what it's gonna look like. We have E, our open E. The second fret is giving us an F sharp. That's part of the key of E. Our fourth fret is giving us a G sharp. And our fifth fret is giving us an A. So those are the first four notes of an E major scale. E, F sharp, G sharp, A. You can use whatever fingers you want. I could use my first, my third, and my pinky. I can just slide one up. You could even play your thumb over the top. My youngest, when he was learning to play bass, that's what he always did. Let's have just a little bit of fun with just those four notes for a minute. So I can play them in order. I can mix them up. So we're doing a couple things. We're still working on the finger picking exercise, which is the point of this video. But while we're playing that over and over and over, we're not getting so bored with just this sound. We're learning an E major scale. We're eventually learning the notes on this fretboard if we want to start memorizing F sharp on the second fret, G sharp on the fourth, oh sorry, third, no fourth, sorry, A on the fifth. I, yeah. Uh, a is the fourth note of the scale, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. So I'm thinking the four, but it's the fifth fret. Um, again, there will be information to go with all of this stuff. So come back for that link. It'll be on the bottom of this video. I promise it'll be up there uh, and it'll be free. Um, and it'll be some, some grids. I'm also gonna talk about the rhythms we talked about earlier, eighth notes, eighth note, triplets, 16th notes, different ways you should be practicing this exercises. Okay, and so back to this, so we said, we have, um, we're now learning our fretboard. We're learning the sound of a major scale and playing a major scale. We're working on our finger picking and maybe the most important part of it to me is we're working on creativity. We're just making stuff up, which is the beautiful thing about music. And I'm just playing the same pattern the whole time. Six, two, one, six, two, one. Thumb, index, middle, thumb, index, middle. And I'm playing these four notes. Let's go a little bit further. There's only seven notes in a major scale, so you've already learned four of them. So our A was on our fifth fret. We're then gonna go to a B on the seventh fret. And for anyone that does not know, the notes in music just follow the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There is no H, so it starts again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But we also have what are called sharps and flats. And I will do a lesson very soon where I'll have a piano in the video. So you can see the piano is a very visual instrument. And even if we're not learning the piano, it's a great way to understand the 12 tones used in music. The seven alphabet letters and five what we're gonna call sharps or flats. They each actually have two names. So this note on my second fret, which I said we're calling it an F sharp because of the key of E, it could also be called a G flat. Uh, again, a later lesson, please don't get scared by that. That'll all make sense with due time. But we have an F on our first fret, we have a G on our third fret. So that means this note in the middle has two names. It can be called F sharp or G flat. But because we are talking about the key of E major, we're gonna call it F sharp. Again, we'll get into all of why later. Right now, we're really just concerned with having fun with finger picking this pattern over and over, right? Thumb on six, 
index on two, middle on one. We're just repeating. And we're having fun creating some sounds with an E major scale. Even if we don't know what these notes are, we're just trying to remember second fret, fourth fret, fifth fret for the A. Then we said we were going to continue to the seventh fret gives us a B. Ninth fret gives us a C sharp. 11th fret gives us a D sharp. That's our seven notes and our double dot on your guitar. That's the E again. That's your open E has played an octave higher to a high E. So my whole scale Sorry, it's hard to see that. That's why I kind of like this. It's a little bit easier to see. So, second fret, F sharp, fourth fret, G sharp, fifth fret, A, seventh fret, B, ninth fret, C sharp, eleventh fret, D sharp, E. Again, you can just write those fret numbers down and not worry about naming them anything and just play them in any order that you want. Again, the whole point is to keep that finger, the right hand going, because that's the exercise. We're working on finger picking. We also learned an E major scale, learned a little bit about our fretboard, and most of all, we had a lot of fun um, playing. So that's that's all I want to do for this. I, 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 I'm going to expand on this lesson. I'm going to do a whole series, I think. So next we'll do E minor. A whole different sound, right? That's based on a minor scale. But I'm, I'll save that one. I'll save that one. This one we're going to leave as E major, basic finger picking exercise. So if anybody has any um, questions, now will be the the time. I'm going to try to keep these lessons a little bit on the short side, so people get what they need out of them. Sometimes long lessons intimidate people. So yeah. So if anybody has any questions, I'll answer them now. Otherwise, um, I probably will sign out of here. I want to thank everybody for watching. Very cool. And uh, I think Erica, we talked about your question for speeding up the left and the right hand. It is just practice. A metronome is very beneficial. Um, I'm going to do again some more live series on on just practice tips, which we'll get more into some of those more specific things. But hopefully that answered your question enough. So, yeah, so that's it. To recap, we did this basic finger picking exercise. Thumb was on low E. Index finger was playing the second string, which is a B. Middle finger played our first string, which was an E. We just went thumb, index, middle. And we kept repeating that pattern. We could come back to that second string. And now we have a new pattern, but we'll save that for another video. Uh, oh, thanks so much. Um, I, I love I love teaching. I love sharing the knowledge. It's nothing makes me happier than um, than people uh, getting something from it, you know, because it's fun. It's one of those things in life that nobody can ever take that away from you. When you get good at something like guitar, it doesn't matter whatever other things are happening in your life. You will keep progressing as a guitar player. And to me, that's been a very important part of of, of my uh, life. Because as some may know, um, hey, thanks, Tanya. Yeah, awesome. Erica, do you have any other song recommendation for learning more advanced finger picking? Yeah, I do. And I have a bunch on, on my channel. Um, so I'll make a list. Or maybe I'll have it pop up as cards. But I'll, I'll make a list. I have some. Um, I'd and I'll, you know what I'll do? I'll try to kind of put them in order from easy to difficult, but, um, oh, Summer 69, yep, that's cool, not a uh, finger picking exercise, but it's a great song for sure, and I'm glad that you had fun with that video. Uh, that's a good song, I'd actually love to do a cover of it at that sometime. Um, 
But Erica, I will try to get a list up there for you. Not I will try, I, I will. And with some links to some other finger picking exercises. And then maybe I'll do some more live streams on some more advanced patterns, right? Because obviously you're ready for something more advanced. So um, let's see what else is there. Yeah, that's it. So right now, although I don't know how long I will do this for, and I know this video goes up and stays up, so I don't know how much this even makes sense for future watch people watching, but the membership to my site is free. You just join the mailing list. That's because I'm, again, I'm in this transitional stage in my life, and I'm, I'm, I'm just testing some different stuff. I'm trying to find a way to um, move on and, and teach more, specifically more online and uh, more on this YouTube channel, that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, so subscribe to the channel if you have not, so you know um, you know what's happening. The little bell notification will let you know when the next live stream is. I plan on doing a lot of these, possibly one a day. Uh, a couple of things here really quick. Uh, Kevin, thanks for the tips. I've been getting faster with the finger picking. And this awesome, Kevin. And again, stay tuned because like just like Erica, she's ready for more. I'll give you more and it'll come very, very soon. We'll, we'll build it. We'll take a whole building block approach to finger picking and we'll get complicated uh, quickly. Not too quickly. Hopefully the right speed. Uh, the Fade to Black by Metallica tutorial was great, by the way. Yeah, cool. That's, I'll list that one for sure. That was definitely a little harder. Are you able to play that one? You're doing great if you can play that one. That's a tricky one for sure. Uh, yeah, and I have other ones. And I have. I, I would like to kind of do... Um, I used to play quite a bit of classical guitar. I kind of got away from it a bit. I mean, I know I'm playing on a steel string now, but... <laughs> Can't remember or what a mess these are all a mess I wasn't planning on playing any of these at the moment but I used to like to play classical guitar on an actual nylon string but it works on this too so maybe I'll get into teaching some of that there might be some stuff there people have interest in I used to pl play so much of that stuff but Yeah. Anyway, but that'll be fun. And that's, again, why I love this stuff, because it gets feeds my brain um, and gives me ideas for all kinds of stuff. So, um, yeah, I guess that's it. Subscribe. Join the mailing list. Uh, I'm also giving away a few free Skype lessons. And then um, I'm going to set up a page so you can – I'm gonna. I want to really get into Skype lessons. And I also want to get into kind of some live online classes that – I think the idea will be they would be fairly cheap, but you know if we can put ten or fifteen people in it, so it doesn't get too crazy. Uh, you know they could be one or two hour classes. Anyway, all kinds of stuff in the in the plans. Um, okay, let's see. Kevin, harder the better. Yep, pushing limits for sure. That's what makes us feel good, right? When we get something that was really difficult not long ago, we start to feel like yes. Uh, Erica, yes, is one of my more recent accomplishments. Yes. It's a great tune, eh? And how it sounds good, fast, and slow. Yeah, that actually, there's so many great parts of that song. I should teach more of it. She's talking about um, Metallica's, uh, which one we're talking about? Not Nothing Else Matters. The other one, Fade to Black. Not the other one. They have a lot of songs. Fade to Black. I think I only did the intro, but there's so many great parts of that song, so maybe I'll put other parts up, too. Um, yeah, okay. Well, I want to thank you all so much again for being in here. Like, I, I don't, um, I, I can't express how much that means to me at this particular juncture in my life with everything changing going on and the Roxy where I played for five years coming to an end, uh, five and a half years, and that's how I earn my living. I'm a single dad with two boys, so I am scared. I, my last night there, we play three nights a week. My last night there is April 7th. This is downtown Vancouver, a very popular live club it's been a lot of fun but it's coming to an end and i am pretty much going like oh my what now i used to teach a lot but i let my teaching thing kind of go downhill i don't have a lot of students in person now it's certainly not going to pay my bills so it'll become april 8th i'm not sure what i'm going to do but that's why i'm here and you guys coming in and watching this and and pumping me up like you're doing with your comments and your questions uh, feels fantastic. Hey, Charles, you made it. Are you just coming in now? Because I know you 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 missed some of the other ones and you wanted to get in here. I'm going to do so many more of those, so don't worry. 
But again, I just, I'm just going to finish this video up, and I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, it means a ton to me. You could never know how much you guys being in here and um, saying what you're saying, the beautiful comments about some cases learning my videos for years you've been on here learning from me, and I love it, and it's making me feel very good, and it's making me feel confident that everything happens for a reason, that the Roxy coming to an end and that phase of my life ending is turning into something else. And I think that turning into something else has a lot to do with what we're doing right here, but being online, uh, helping, helping people. That's awesome, Tanya, I got this. That's what people keep trying to tell me, yeah. And you know what, most days I feel like I do. I got this, I'm on it, but I can't say that there's not some days that uh, I'm pretty darn scared. Anyway, I feel good at the moment, so we're good. Hey, uh, and again, I didn't, we never really figured out how to pronounce your name. I don't think it's Paul. It doesn't look like it's Paul. Pa pal, Paul, 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 I'm not sure. You're welcome, though. Thank you much. Thanks so, so much for watching. So um, I guess we'll stop it here. I, I, I feel good about this. this. is a good place to stop. Again, thank you so much. Subscribe. Um... Yeah, Erica, the more active you are, the more people will come. Yeah, that's the idea. And I really, if, if providing I can stay mentally focused and mentally in the game, I kind of would like to do one of these a day or every second day, you know, so and work on the site. And you'll see if you follow the links, you'll see what, what's happening with that site and where I'm going. I have a lot of, I think, really cool ideas for it and a lot of uh, cool plans that I think are just going to help. I think they're going to go in conjunction with these lessons. The material will be in front of you. You can bring it up on the page. Ideally, it would be done when the lesson is done and uh, or when the live thing is done, so you'd bring it up. You could see it. Oh, well, I'm going to get there. It's going to happen. Um, yeah, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say bye, everybody. Again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for being here. It was really fun. Stay tuned. Hit the notifications because I'm going to try to do one tomorrow. I'm not sure. Maybe tomorrow some on my list. I, I thought I would like to do one on, on rhythm, and I would like to do... Uh, yeah, you should do it every day. I think so too. I think I should do one every day. I want to do one on uh, on rhythm, like maybe tomorrow. I want to do one on, on like building chords and switching chords, maybe the following day. One on playing and singing. Um, I have a client list. A nice thing that might be to do would be to keep expanding, like the making the series. Like this is number one of finger picking, and when we'll do number two, and we'll just keep expanding. Um, Okay, glad I caught it this time. Used to live stream more on Twitch, but glad to see you here too. Yeah, thanks, Charles. That's that's awesome. Um, I'm glad you made it too. And there's lots more coming, so stay tuned. Hit the little notification, and hopefully, maybe I'll even see you all tomorrow or the next day, but that's the plan. Okay, again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for watching. Bye.